Jimmy, how you doing? My name's Shia. We uh, exchanged a couple emails back and forth. Uh, yeah, I'm calling in regards to your life. This shit is sexy as fuck, man. And uh, I think I could, uh, I mean, I don't know obviously much about your life other than what I saw in the National Geographic thing. But from what I saw, it's just uh, it's extremely sexy. Uh, you know, I, I want to, if I can, turn it into a film. I think there hasn't been a movie really made about the new generation. Uh, so, I don't know. I mean, I, I know a couple of writers. I know a couple of producers. I think if uh, me and you get on the same page and get on the ball in terms of what you're comfortable doing and what you're okay with, I don't obviously don't want to get nobody in no trouble. Uh, but I think there's a way to, like, you know, uh, move names around and move places. But if I had you on board as a producer and a uh, sort of advisor I think we could make something really fucking incredible um, especially the stuff between the friends like you know the mafia movies I've seen ain't really had that element in it yet you know a bunch of boys going up together getting into this life uh, you know and then having your friend shoot your other friend I mean some of this shit is insane so again say, not being able to say much because I don't know much I just know what I saw on the show I'm fascinated Doug. so um uh, I'd love to chop it up with you sometime and maybe, uh, you know, knock heads around in terms of, you know, maybe getting a movie together or start writing a screenplay. What's up, guys? Well, that was a message from Shia LaBeouf. At one time, I was sitting down with Shia LaBeouf, and we're going to put a screenplay together. Now, in the near future, I'm going to have a couple castings. I'm going to start filming some scenes about uh, back in the day when I was a kid. And uh, we're going to tell a Beth Avenue story. So the reason why I did this video today was because YouTube always has someone that thinks they know my life better than I know my life. And people are always trying to trigger me. So I want to make this clear. The last time I seen Joey Calco or Tommy Reynolds was 1993. That's the last time I seen them. Fabrizio, I seen when I came home. He was the only one I seen on Bath Avenue at the time. He was with his girl. I pulled up with my girl. And we started talking. And Fabrizio said, Jimmy, he said, I got so mad when Anthony Sparrow and Joe Benanti released you to marry Madonna. And I told Fabrizio, I said, Fabrizio, what's the difference? Whether I'm here or whether I'm there, we're still friends. And I was only playing the bullshit with him. Because in that life, that's what it is. You're only playing the bullshit. Now, you have a couple individuals on here where uh, they think they know it all. So yesterday, someone was saying that I don't know why they killed Paulie Galino. Now, Joey Calco is the one who pulled the trigger on Paulie Galino. Joey Calco testified and he told the story of the reason why Paulie Galino was killed at Anthony Sparrow's trial. So don't tell me I don't know the reason why Paulie Galino was murdered. Joey Calco told the whole story of the reason why Paulie Galino was murdered. You know. Joey Calco sat down with a prosecutor and he revealed all that information, even the reason why Jack Sheridan was killed. So for you people out there who truly think that you know my story or anyone else's story, I tell you, you were not at no scenes. You were not on an indictment. A lot of you guys think you know so much, but you know so little, and you know nothing about me, that's for sure. The only thing you know is the lies that you create and you put on YouTube or you put on the internet. That's the only thing you know, because you don't know me at all, okay? But I just wanted to set the record straight. The last time I seen Tommy Reynolds was 1993. Think about it, how long ago that is. Okay, 1993. Okay, that's the last time I seen Tommy Reynolds. Okay, I went away May 
of 93 on a six-year bid, okay? I had a federal case and state case run together, okay? I had a four to eight run on top of 60 months. Now, I didn't get home until November of 98. That's five and a half years I did. Tommy Reynolds was already locked up for something else. Robitzo was on the street. Joey Calco killed the kid Jack Sheridan, and he was on the limb in Italy. So when I hit the street, the only one that was on the street was actually Fabrizio. Everyone else was locked up. So uh, I wanted to set the record straight on that. And uh, to all you people out there who think you truly know me, you don't know me at all, and you probably will never know me because you're never going to be relevant in my life, and I'll ho hopefully I'm not relevant in yours, but... Uh, Keep on doing what you're doing. I wish you the best. And I just want to set the record straight that, uh, you know, when you go through so much bullshit in your life, you get defeated, you fall down, you get back up, you know, you have children. And over 30 years go by, you know, anyone who's the same person from 30 years ago, you know what, shame on you if you didn't grow if you didn't excel, if you didn't uh, move on in life. So I just wanted to set the record straight. Everyone listening, have a great Tuesday. Tomorrow night, Wednesday, I'm going to be on Bobby Louise's show, 8 p.m. Then Thursday, I'm going to have Joe Murray, a defense attorney, and we'll talk about a couple cases and his upbringing and uh, maybe a couple boxing matches and stuff like that. So to all you people out there, everyone, enjoy your week. Okay, don't work too hard. Give your life to God and stay strong, stay safe. I'll see you in my next video. I love you guys and I'll see you soon. Bye, guys. The streets will never make you grow. It's not a seed, it's a gutter. There's no happy endings in this life. So this is my message to you. The streets will never love you back.